Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another episode of MTD CNC North America. We are at Tornos today, just outside of Chicago, and I get to be, spend time with my friend Gonzalo Serrano. So we're going to learn a little bit yeah. more about what this machine can do, its capabilities, and why it's been so successful and popular over the last few years. So Gonzalo, welcome to MTD CNC. Happy to be here. Happy to have you here in Tornos. Uh, thank you so much. So let's talk about this machine, man. Let's get right into it. Let's talk about how this machine, you guys call it a five axis, but other people would call it a seven axis. Let's talk about what industries it works best in. Let's talk about the rigidity from the floor up, the precision and the yep. quality of what this machine can do for all of the viewers out there. Correct, so to answer your question, Tony, we do call it a five axis machine, five linear axis machine, but we do have the C axis on the main and sub, which makes it a seven. So let's talk a little bit about how this machine is built. I know you guys started in 1880 and the first, one of the first machines came out in the early 1900s and some of the differences about how great this machine is, being the original Swiss style machine and building from the floor up. So let's talk a little bit about rigidity and precision. Right, so that was one of the main focuses when they relaunched this machine, right, was spindle power so you could take a little bit more harder depth of cuts, you know what I mean? When you're machining, you need that spindle power to ha be able to handle that, right? So that's one of uh, what we lead in. These spindles are, you know, in the market the best, one of the best. And also, it opens up the range of materials that you can work with, right? So if you're lacking in spindle power, then, you know, you're going to have some issues on the tougher materials. In a machine like this, can I machine any material, just change my depth of cut? Yeah, yeah. Of course, there's always limitations. But for the most part, in medical and aerospace, we're able to cover that on this machine. And what size parts can be run on a size machine like this? Well, this particular machine is a 26 millimeter machine. So th that would be your, your, your max diameter on bar stock. For overall length, we could go up to 210 millimeters. And what makes this machine really stand out in the market today? Because I know mm -hmm. it's a popular machine, and I know it's one that the people watching want to learn more about, and I know it's one that you guys have been selling a bunch of. So what makes this machine so significant and popular in the industry? What I would say is that it covers a lot of the industries, right? So aerospace, medical, uh, automotive, right? The more popular industries, uh, general machine shop, right? So. A lot of machines are designed a lot of the times for specific industries. This one's able to cover a lot of those industries with its, uh, the tooling is made with modularity in mind. So a lot of the tools that I use on the main side, I'm able to transfer to the sub side. If I want to add a triple, you know, uh, drilling unit, I could do that. So one of the major, you know, advantages of the Torno system, right, it all works off fixation points. So you're able to grab different style holders, so if I take out the end working block, I could put a whirling unit, right? And through the TMI, the, the Torno system, it finds center for me, and X. I don't have to do anything as a user, right? I could take the whirling head out, okay, and I could stack multiple live tools, right? And as a user, I just have to touch the tool off. I don't have to try to find some crazy geometry numbers to try to get it on center. Back in my day, I had to use a piece of paper. Right? I didn't get the probes, I didn't get this accessibility. I was jogging a, a tool over to my part with a piece of paper and that's how I used to touch off, which isn't nearly as precise as what you're talking about, or as efficient, or as effective. Correct, and you know, a lot of guys like that, they, they like the paper method, right? So we give the user that option, right? So if you want to touch off to the bar stock, you could do that. Or you could use the TMI system, right? So I'll just give an example of the TMI, right? So let's say, for example, you want to center a tool, right? Usually, you take a face cut, right? You drop it on off center, take a face cut, measure the pin, you know, half of that, and you find center, right? But what do you do when you run into a back turning tool or a threading tool? You probably have to, you know, get a height gauge, and there's multiple methods you could do, right? But with the TMI system, you could, you, you could put your threading tool in, touch it off on X, and the TMI will calculate based off the bar stock, right? It'll touch it and it'll, it'll calculate itself center height. So if you have a back training tool and a threading tool, you know, through the system, you could find center. I imagine that'd be helpful for a lot of people. And about how long does that take, more or less? To find center? Yeah. I would say less than five minutes. I'd say two, two to three minutes. Well, Gonzalo, when we're talking about the extra 
power that this machine offers and the rigidity that goes along with it. It's also important to understand that both the main spindle and the sub spindle actually go at the same RPM. And what is the what are the benefits of having that as a, as a part of the machine? Well, it, it opens up the flexibility to the kind of parts you could run, right? So if, if you have the same horsepower available and you could hit the, the same RPMs on the sub side, well, that opens up a lot of machining operations that you could cover on the on the back working tools. And what happens if my sub spindle is has less of an RPM? Well, you're going to have a, a lot of problems with, you know, those, those harder materials, possibly, you know. Uh, you're going to run into some chatter issues, probably. Uh, you're probably going to, your cycle time, you know, because you're going to have to add operations. Maybe not your, your cycle time on the sub is longer than the main side, which is what you don't want. Yeah, I do want to point out that this particular machine, for all, you know, the customers out there that are considering this, you do have an option for a plug-and-play B-axis. So if you decide to buy this machine with just like in this configuration, for example, but down the line you figure out, hey, my job shop or, you know, our company could use a B-axis, well, you're prepped for that on this machine. So you're able to just add that plug and play B-axis to this machine. Whenever needed. Whenever needed. Right I there. like that. So something I'd like to bring up is that behind me here is the FANUC interface, right? And right. I see FANUC on all of the Tornos machines as I was walking through your beautiful showroom. That is a very user-friendly, well-known interface. So when I buy a Tornos machine, I don't have to reinvest a lot of time into learning a brand new software. It's a very familiar software, which I likely have already in my shop on another machine. Uh, the, yeah, FANUC is a very user-friendly control, right? And this, is, this particular machine, it's the first one with the FANUC Plus control. Right, so what that means is we developed a macro specifically for this, this control. So now you have the option for, we, we have a macro, it's, it's like oscillation chip breaker technology. It's called ACB Plus. So same thing, right? It opens up the kind of parts you could make on this, right? So ACB Plus, right, I actually just had an application not too long ago. There was a customer having a lot of chip problems, right? chips were wrapping up on, on their part, they weren't able to run co on continuous, right? When you buy a machine like this, you want to be in production, right? So they weren't able to do that. So with our macro ACB Plus, we were able to take, take the, the pass in one cut, right? And break that chip up in, into mul multiple segments. So if we're gonna cut deeper, and we're gonna cut materials that would create uh, something we might wrap around the tool or the spindle or wrap mm -hmm. around anything, right? Chip breaker to me sounds like something that is extremely necessary. So being the first of its kind with the FANUC in that type of, of system, that sounds amazing. Oh, it's really good. Like, like I mentioned before, for that application, it worked really good. It was a very stringy material, right? And the main difference is I was able to break the chip up while maintaining proper surface callout. The main difference is, like I mentioned, and I want to make sure I drive that home, is the surface finish comes out really good. Gonzalo, if we want to learn more about Tornos, where can we find you? Website, social media platforms. If someone's looking you up right now. Let's get them involved. So Tornos.com and all, all major social media platforms. Perfect. Gonzalo, I appreciate you educating me on this machine. I'm excited uh, to showcase this to other people around the world and certainly in the U.S. where you're based as well. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to MTDC and C North America and we will see you again soon.